just some thoughts for Saturday night. I've been in work, just got back, having a beer. Um, so I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the Eurovision Song Contest because I'll come to that in a minute. Apparently, Ukraine. Uh, 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 right, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, <clears throat> first of all, football. So Liverpool have won the FA Cup first time since 2006. Uh, but yeah, congratulations to them. You know, uh, I don't say it begrudgingly as an Everton fan. I, I can't say it begrudgingly because they are unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Uh, they're they're in a different stratosphere to most teams Liverpool at the moment, uh, and I genuinely would appreciate just I've I've seen Everton win one trophy in what 30, 30 odd years of supporting them. Um, Liverpool win a trophy every. You know, every five minutes. So you know, it's an exercise in misery and torture supporting Everton, whereas Liverpool fans. But I guess the only way's down for them, you know. Um. So, but yeah, they won that on penalty shoot on a penalty shootout. Congratulations to them, and Everton have a massive game tomorrow. Uh. You know, and the next three games for us, they don't shape a season. They shape an entire future. They they shape an identity. Uh, they shape a tradition because if Everton get relegated, then it's hard to make a case for. <clears throat> it's hard to make a case for them continuing in their present guise, whatever that is. Anyway, enough about the football. Um, so I made a very flippant comment the other day to Sarah, my girlfriend. I um. I heard it was the Eurovision Song Contest. I always forget about it every every year. I forget about it, and then I, and then I remember that it's always in May. Um and and then I forget about it again. Uh, you know, I've got I've got the similar memories to many people when you know when we were when we were kids and it was mildly interesting and you know back in the nineties I guess. And you'd have the rigged voting, and you'd have the, you know, the really, the really nice looking women in in Poland and Sweden reading out the results and no poire and all the rest of it, and then it's like I say, it get rigged, and someone had, like all the Baltic countries have vote for the other Baltic countries, or all the Scandinavian countries have vote for for Sweden. The UK had always finished last. Ireland won quite regularly. You know all that, and all the songs were pretty shit. So I've got memories of the Eurovision, but I've never really been a fan. I see it as a um, as something that's it's nice, you know, it's entertainment. Um, but well, I I don't know this. I, I assume it's been corrupted by the usual communist. Uh, narrative and uh, you know and stories and I, but what did pop into my head was I heard I can't remember how I heard Ukraine were in it and why shouldn't they be you know they're in Europe so of course so the flipping comment I made to Sarah my girlfriend was you know I bet you Ukraine will win the Eurovision Song Contest But I didn't actually think it through in terms of, you know, things are so corrupt at the moment, you know, and, and people are subject to such propaganda at the moment that it's actually going to happen, that it's arranged for Ukraine Ukraine to win the Eurovision. And I know that the Eurovision Song Contest, it's not a, you know, it's not a democracy, it's not anything that's, you know, that is decided on on some set of rules whereby everybody's treated fairly it's not i know i know that but what well, ukraine apparently i'm going to throw this video out now but i've just i've just checked then apparently ukraine are going to win <laughs> what but why are we surprised that why are we surprised at that and why is that powerful, particularly to people in the UK? Um, because, well, 
a lot of people in the UK still can't get over the fact that we're not in Europe anymore. Oh, we're not in Europe anymore. Oh, yeah, we are actually. We are still in Europe. You know, we're still an island off the northwest coast of Europe. So you know, we are. We're still European. What you're saying is we're not in the European Union anymore, and you're equating that or conflating that with the Eurovision Song Contest. So, <clears throat> no, we are. Um, but it, it, it's quite exquisite, the, the kind of like the, the milk and honey that they feed to the usual suspects who just lap it up because they love it, don't they? Ukraine. Um, I mean, what kind of what, what kind of what kind of situation would you have where a country is expending all of its resources on a war with a country that is many, many, many times bigger, dozens of times bigger in terms of land mass, and that's even taken into account the land mass of the Ukraine and all the money. And the effort that that entails, but they've still got time to find a way to beat 27, 28. I don't know how many countries are in the Eurovision this year, I don't know. I'm sure Australia were in it last time. I checked, I don't know what that is. And maybe this is me being ignorant, it just all, all seems completely insane to me, which isn't a surprise because everything in this world is insane. But Ukraine, despite all that, despite all the suffering, you know, and all the war and everything, uh, they've won the Eurovision, Eurovision Song Contest, or on the way to winning it. Again, I spot flaws in logic. I, I always thought the Eurovision was about, well, well, even taking into account all the rate of voting and whatever, which is fine, that's part of the fun of it, and I get that. But at its core, at its essence, essence isn't it about the best song? Isn't that what the Eurovision's about? Who's got the best song? I don't know, maybe Ukraine have them, maybe it's just pure coincidence, who knows? And then one other thing I'll uh, talk about is I saw a quote the other day um, which just jumped out at me, uh, uh, this quote, Arthur Schopenhauer, a German philosopher. Um, it's a YouTube channel called just called Quotes <clears throat> and it's 10, 11, 12 minutes of, of quotes. Um, you know, very perceptive and insightful words that have been spoken by very, you know, famous people, philosophers, and, and, and you know, or maybe scientists, playwrights, authors, politicians, even anybody, anybody who's been, you know, thrown into the into the fire of um, of fame, and um, this quote was really impactful for me. It was. It was simply this: um, men are the devils of the, of the world, and the animals are its tortured souls. And that kind of like spoke to me on. And I'd say it uh, because I've always thought that I'm a tortured soul. I am. <laughs> I'm not trying to be all mysterious. But I am, and I always have been, and I think I always will be. And because of that, I feel a connection with animals. And I always have done. I love, love animals, especially dogs, and I love horses as well. But I love all, I love all animals, and I, I can't bear maltreatment or mistreatment of animals, and I don't understand when people don't have a natural connection and empathy for animals. And the reason why that quote is so important is because, well, in essence, it's true, men are the devils of the of, of, of the of the world. Well, yeah, to be a devil, you've got to be able to, to think and plot and plan and scheme. You know, that's what a devil is. Well, animals can't do that. Yeah, a grizzly bear might attack you for nothing. But it, but it's not doing that out of any any malice, uh, any evil intent, or a snake might bite you and inject you with venom, and you die. Well, again, it's not out of any place of that's an evil snake. Yeah, they might be symbolised as evil in our culture, but a snake isn't evil. A snake is a snake. A bear is a bear. You know, a dog is a dog. A cat is a cat. Well, a human being is much more 
deep than any of those creatures, but there are certain people who I genuinely believe, and I, because I'm one of them, who can relate, can form empathy, can develop connections, can develop friendship with animals much easier than other human beings. And those human beings, there's quite a you know, few number of people who, who do that, can do it with the other human beings who they may or may not come into contact with in their lives who also have those traits almost of the animal in terms of empathy, connection, trust, uh, maybe innocence. And even if they're not innocent, they appreciate the purity of innocence um, and, and, and trust and a real connection where you can be with a, a dog or, or a horse or whatever animal it may be <clears throat> and in the mind of the animal if they have a mind obviously they have a brain but however they perceive things they're never going to die because they can't appreciate what death is. They can't plan for death. That they can't comprehend where they came from, what birth was, why they're in this world. This is based on our understanding of it. They, they may have certain heightened senses, like, like eyesight for a cat or or hearing or scent for a dog. And everything for them is connected to where they came from, which is their genetics, which is their essence, which is just being a dog, just being a horse, just being a cat, just being a rat. Uh, and the nobility of that and the and, and the simplicity of that and the what do they think of us what do these animals think and we don't know if they can think cognizantly we don't know but if they do what do they think about us are we the devils i think undoubtedly yes So I want to say, if you know anybody who treats animals well, respects animals and is like an animal in terms of trust, innocence, connection, deep essence of just, just being, they're the people that you want in your life as well as the actual animals themselves. Because that's what I've learned in life is that men are the devils of the earth. Men, yeah, men and women. Uh, human beings are the devils of the earth. They are. That's what I've learned in life. And if you can find somebody who isn't consumed by the consumerist mindset, isn't obsessed with a materialistic lifestyle, isn't beholden to whoever it is that they perceive in authority, isn't shamefully dismissive of things like values and morals. If you can find people who actually are, are, are somehow above that and spiritually attuned with what's really important in this world, which is, sorry about the dishwasher, well, dishwashers are very important in this world, actually, if you're a lazy bastard like me, but, you know, which is spirituality, which is nature, which is animals and our relationship with animals, which is an innocent, innocence, um, and
real experience, which is real observation and immersion of selves in whatever this is that we've got, whatever we call this reality. Yeah, so that was the quote. Um, and like all very, very <clears throat> uh, insightful quotes, it, leads, it needs more unpicking. It's so deep, that quote, for me. And I may, maybe have misunderstood it. So to sum up, Liverpool won. It was nil-nil. Liverpool won in extra, uh, after extra time. 6-5 six, six, on penalties. Probably by the time you watch this, Ukraine have won the Eurovision Song Contest. And I flippantly said that would happen without actually thinking, oh yeah, they're, they're so unhinged that they will arrange for that to happen. And yeah, and then that the, the quote from Arthur Schovenauer. Anyway, right, I'll leave you to it. Have a great day. You'll probably watch this in the morning, I guess, Sunday. Everton are going to win tomorrow, hopefully 2-0. I'm going to say 2-0. Edge closer to Premier League safety. And this is uh, your Saturday night chat from Dave. See you later. Bye-bye.